All right, guys, good morning. Welcome to another decluttering, organizing, and empties vlog. Um, I wanted to go around and do some decluttering today and some organization, and I had a whole bin full of declutters that really just needed to go. I needed to just get them out of the house. Before I could do that, I wanted to make this video for you guys. So I don't have as many like um, skincare, hair care kind of declutters. There's actually quite a few clothing items. There's a few makeup items. Yeah. And then also I wanted to just take you guys through, I was organizing some of my work clothes. I thought I would just share that with you because I'm replacing a few of my scrubs and I need to organize my scrub drawer. And yeah, so today's like a super rainy, gloomy day. I took the dog outside for ball this morning, which was really annoying. So it was kind of spitting out, but it wasn't really full on raining, but it was super windy. So I couldn't hold the umbrella properly and he got soaked. I got soaked and it was just like a really frustrating <laughs> start to our morning. And then I had to clean his paws. As you can see, he is sleeping on the bed already, but don't worry. He's totally dry. I made sure he was downstairs for a good hour and a half or so before he made himself comfortable, but he just loves sleeping on the bed and he gets so comfortable. And I just I can't say no to the little guy, you know, he loves laying there. I think because it smells, I guess, it makes him comfortable. So anyways, maybe what I'll start out with is showing you guys my scrub situation and then we'll get into the actual empties and declutters. I think that's pretty much it. That's all this video is going to be about today. I think that'll be a pretty long video. Um, I do have to do a little bit of cleaning, but I kind of already went around this morning and did that. And yeah, I was watching a video this morning from Caitlin Pawlowski. I don't know if you guys are familiar with her. She used to be a luxury handbag and like fashion uh, creator, but she recently switched gears and started um, making more like simple minimalist kind of content. And she really promotes um, and shares other creators who have decided to take themselves off of PR lists and stuff like that in search of a more simple way of life because of the amount of waste and everything that's created. And I just resonated so much with her video, you guys. If you're interested in that kind of thing and you want to see some refreshing content, um, I would definitely recommend checking out her channel. I'll try to link the video that I watched down below. I actually only got part way through, so I really want to finish watching that today too. But she was basically sharing how creators, um, even like creators, who don't get a ton of PR, the amount of waste that's produced, like it actually makes me feel sick. You guys, when I see videos, I'm not going to name certain creators, but when I see certain videos pop up and they are massive PR hauls, like the title will be biggest PR unboxing ever. And the entire thumbnail is just boxes, tons and tons of boxes. Um, it actually makes me feel nauseated because I think to myself, that's just one creator. How many people out there are getting sent huge amounts of content or of uh, PR every single month, the amount of waste that's produced. And I have fallen into this trap before as well. I used to get a lot of PR every month, mostly perfume related stuff. Um, and also I was starting to get like makeup stuff and skincare stuff. And I can relate even after I got Ivar, I started to get dog stuff. And while it's flattering and nice, and it kind of makes you feel like you made it in the content world when companies want to start sending you stuff, while that part is nice, it is a lot to deal with. It's a lot of boxes. It's a lot of waste. It's a lot of tissue paper. Everything comes in a box, within a box, within a box. Um, for Ivar, I really like getting the dog treats every month. Like those are fine because he eats dog treats and we're going to purchase them anyway. But when it comes to dog toys, I have had to start donating toys and even a couple of them he destroyed. Um, so it just was getting to the point that even that was becoming too much for me. So I actually wrote the company I was that I was getting PR from, the Wolfpack, which is a wonderful company. I think they're great. But I told them I just don't have room for all the toys. Ways, and I thanked them very much for sending us the last few boxes of stuff because it's been really nice and I really appreciate it. But um, especially when you're trying to like keep your life more simple and minimal, like it just does not make sense to get stuff sent to you constantly. And this was one of the biggest reasons as well that I didn't want to continue doing the whole perfume thing because I was so tired. I, I explained this to you guys in another video, but I was so tired of getting tons of PR it was a combination of, it was exhausting. A lot of the times I didn't like the products. Then I had to figure out where was I going to give them. A lot of the times they were perfumes that my friends and family also didn't like. There was always a lot of waste. Even when you get like a Zerzhoff perfume, Zerzhoff perfumes are great, but the packaging is excessive. Nobody needs a full on leather, like casket for their perfume. We don't need that. Like it could very, very easily just come wrapped in tissue paper. 
in a box. It doesn't have to be like this elaborate packaging that you then have to recycle. It's almost impossible to recycle it because it's part paper, part leather, part metal. Like it's just, it's too much. So I had to put my coffee cup down because my finger is getting sore holding my cup. But yeah, it's excessive. And it also just like, I shared this recently on my Instagram, but when I, when I see huge perfume collections and 50% of it or 75% of it was sent in PR because they're a larger creator or whatever, or they're on a ton of PR lists, it doesn't, it really takes away, away for me the excitement and the interest in that video. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm not interested in seeing somebody's perfume collection where most of it was gifted. Even though you could make the argument that even though they're gifted, they're still great perfumes. Even though they're gifted, it doesn't mean you don't actually genuinely like them and whatever, that's fine. But if you would not have with a normal budget, a normal, like relatable average consumer's budget, go out and purchase those items yourself and put them on a shelf and use them. If you didn't love them enough to do that yourself, then it still just takes something away. Even when it's a sponsored video, it takes something away. I don't know about you guys, but it gets really annoying when you're watching videos and every single person is doing a better help sponsorship or every single person is showing a fragrance Dubois perfume or every single, cause come on guys, nobody is going out and spending $700 on fragrance Dubois. Do I really expect my audience to run out and spend $500 on a, on a fragrance Dubois perfume? Like, I don't know. Um, I was when I was watching Caitlyn's video, she was talking about how maybe because of her age, because she's turned thirty, she said maybe she that kind of marketing doesn't get to her anymore. Like she she isn't suckered in by the huge PR unboxing and by the brand trips and all of this stuff. Thankfully, myself, like I, I was I was well into my thirties before any of like before TikTok came along, before any of this nonsense, like I don't see the craziness that goes on on TikTok. I'm so glad I'm actually not on there. I think it's a very problematic platform. There's, I'm sure there's lots of great things about it, but I think it's overall a very problematic platform. And even Instagram used to be much more simple and much more wholesome. And that has also become extremely problematic. The amount of artificial intelligence used, the amount of filters, the undisclosed sponsorships, lack of transparency, the huge hauls and the excessive consumerism. And yes, when you become, you know, when you get to be a quote unquote larger creator, companies want to start sending you stuff. That's because you're a creator. The general public doesn't need to receive an entire collection of every YSL foundation. And it just makes people think, especially our younger generation and like young girls, like my daughter, makes them think that that is normal, desirable, attainable, and that everybody should just be doing that and that it's perfectly normal to have shelves upon shelves of nonsense that you don't need. And it's just so overwhelming. I find it just so overwhelming. <clears throat> so anyway, I really resonated with Caitlin's video. Like it really hit home for me. And sometimes when I watch um, like other girls in the YouTube community, which I used to be kind of a part of that community, and I kind of removed myself from it a little bit. Um, when I see some of their videos and I see that they're getting gifted really expensive perfumes and they're working with companies that I used to work with and they're sending them lots of expensive perfumes every month, part of me part of me feels a little envious in a sense. I, I can't lie. Like part of me is like, oh, I kind of wish I was still getting all that, but not really in a greater sense, you guys, like there's a reason I had to move away from it. There's a reason I had to push myself away from it. Um, and I feel so much better. Like I feel so much more genuine. I feel like I'm making decisions for myself again, instead of because I have a platform. It's amazing the decisions you make when you're just a regular consumer versus when you have a platform, it starts to really mess with your mind. It starts to make you feel overwhelmed and anxious and like you lack sincerity and you start to feel like a sellout sort of, and you feel like you're selling your soul to companies to promote products. Um, it's just too much. It's all too much. So anyway, those are my little thoughts for today to preface this, um, declutter and empties video. Now let's get into it. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, the um, the container that's right there on the side of the dresser, that is my empties and declutters. As you can see, it's so full that it's overflowing. I actually decluttered some of my activewear. Um, I decluttered just a few other things I'll share with you guys. A couple of problematic skincare ingredients that weren't working for me. I do have a couple of empties. Um, a perfume is in there, I believe. 
and then the rest of the stuff this is scrubs and this is also scrubs this is actually laundry that i have to fold and put away um so let's start out with the scrubs basically you guys this is a mishmash of new scrubs that i got which you can tell because this one is bright white i don't know if you can actually tell in this lighting but that's bright white that is not bright white these scrubs um the ones that are not bright white i have had for probably five or six years which i think is really good like i that's one good thing about me when it comes to my work clothing i do not constantly get new clothing um part of it is because i like to have a uniform and so when i wear when i go to work i always just wear white it works for me um back when i was younger when i just started nursing i had lots of different colors of scrubs i had um, holiday themed scrubs like I had Halloween themed scrubs I had floral I had lots of different colors I had brown peach pink yellow you name it I had tons of scrubs and because of that I would get sick of them from time to time and I would want to replace them when I switched to just wearing white um, it became like a simple everyday uniform there was no questioning it there was no opportunity to get tired of it because it was always just my uniform it was just what I put on every day white always goes with white white goes with everything else none of that stuff kind of comes up it also is a lot easier to get dressed in the morning when you only have one thing to put on for work that's one thing i love about nursing is it's it's so easy to get ready in the morning because you don't have to put on a lot of makeup in fact they frown upon that um, you don't have to do your hair super fancy just whatever is functional and easy and works and is clean and well kept and you just wear scrubs so it's like very very easy i never have to think before i go to work in the morning i never have to put together an outfit or think too hard about what i'm going to do it takes me like if i'm running late i can literally wake up and be out the door and at work within 15 minutes literally from my front door to my work 15 minutes and that's if i slept in surprisingly i don't have stains on them it's not because of them being white that they're wearing out it's because they they've just been washed so many times and i've bleached them a couple times and stuff like that and so they're just starting to wear out and as you can see the ones that were white are no longer bright white they're more of like an off white so i did order a couple new pairs of white scrubs and unfortunately the pants are such a bright white they're not going to go with my my tops because they no longer like you can tell that one top is kind of permanently discolored compared to the pants even though they're both white so then i had to get um different tops so i now have quite a variety of tops and bottoms um and i do think i have to probably do a little bit of a declutter although i'm so attached to my old scrub tops like i love them so much i don't know if i can like bear to get rid of them they've just been such a part of my life for so long but like you can see this top here i don't know if you guys can see but the around the neck is a little bit discolored probably from sunscreen or maybe a little bit of makeup or something but these are like the best scrub tops ever they're high quality they're comfortable they're really well structured they're thick material i'm wondering if there's a way i can get them back to being a brighter white i'm gonna have to go to like the laundry section of walmart or something and see if i can find something to um brighten them up a little bit so that i can wear them with my new pants so here is an overview of the two scrub tops this one is new i got a couple different um styles this was one of the ones i liked um and this one's old but i don't know if you guys can see the difference in the colors new old they're also slightly different fabrics but yeah the brand i really like by the way you guys probably my favorite brand to get scrubs at the moment is dickies um i also like heart heart soul is it heart soul or is it no sorry wonder wink wonder wink is the the other brand that i've discovered that i quite like i like their their scrub tops and i also really like their under shirts like their long sleeve white shirts that you wear underneath your scrubs um wonder wink is a brand i want to look more into in the future for scrub tops but um yeah but so far for like my usual uniform head to toe like pants shirts i have been really liking dickies um this is the brand i've been using like I said, since I graduated and really, really like it. So I want to get something that maybe I can put these through the wash, brighten them a little bit. Also over time, I think these bright white ones will obviously probably turn a little bit more off white colored, which I think I would prefer. These are like quite stark. They actually look kind of cool white, whereas this one almost looks like a warm white. And I kind of prefer the warm one <laughs> to be honest. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm just going to go ahead and fold all of these. I'm going to put them in piles of what's new and what's old. And then I'm going to figure out how I'm going to 
store them. I don't think I'm, like I said, I don't think I'm quite ready to declutter my old scrub tops because they're still great tops if I can get them a little brighter. I wanted to show you as well the pants that I got. So I think I got three pairs total two for sure but maybe three i like to have at least like two or three pairs of pants that i can wear on repeat because the most number of shifts i ever have in a row currently is three and even then i usually don't do all three in a row i usually try to trade one or whatever but anyways these are the pants that i got they're also from the brand dickies um these are just a like mid-rise there may be even a little high-rise jogger size extra small they have an elasticized waist they have a drawstring lots of pockets i really like pockets and then they are a jogger style so they're tighter around the ankle um previously i would wear scrubs that were like a cargo style or a straight leg and even a flare leg but i've moved more toward the jogger style because i think they're just a little bit more modern and they're they're quite nice looking, they're quite sharp looking. And actually I've been looking at different um, positions like in in nursing. And if I start working in a new place or in another place, I wanna have like sharp new, you know, I wanna feel really good about myself walking into the place. Uh, so I just thought it would be nice to have like maybe a different type of pant to go with, kind of like a fresh start, you know what I mean? Um, give me that kind of zest and excitement back for nursing that I had when I first graduated because yeah, since then a lot has happened. Pandemic, blah, 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 all this stuff. <laughs> okay, so I got most of that folded. I also got a few, like I said, um, under scrub tops, like the long sleeve white t-shirts. I love layering my scrubs and I'm always cold, so I always wear long sleeves. Um, so these are new long sleeve t-shirts that I got. Two of them are from a brand called Adar. I have, I've never heard of this before. I don't really know what it's all about, but I like to get the small ones as well, not the extra small, because I don't like them to be too skin tight and constrictive. I prefer my scrubs to be a little bit looser and more comfortable. So anyway, I tried this one from Adar. I really liked it. It's like the perfect um, long sleeve under scrub top. I'll hang it up on the closet and show you what it looks like. So I ended up getting two of them, because when you find something that you love that fits you perfectly, like I've told you guys many times, get a couple of them. That way, when it comes time that you've worn them out and you need another one, you don't have to spend forever hunting. So actually, I think I might have three. So I have that one, another one, and another one. These are all exactly the same from the company Adar. This is one that I got from the company Wonderwink, and it's very, very similar. Look how, I don't know if you guys can see, look how like dirty they look and how like the stitches are coming loose i have had these for like five years you guys like they have had their use but they're no longer coming clean like the um they're totally stretched out i can't get them i can't get them proper like the proper shape again i'll just show you around the neck is totally misshapen they do not hold their shape anymore all of the like information like the sizing and the logo everything has washed off the stitches and the seams are coming loose. They have stretched out so much. They don't even look good on me anymore. They're like permanently wrinkled. I can't get them to have a proper shape. Uh, it They just look terrible. Like, look at the difference in that. That just looks, this one's like all pinky peachy and discolored and this one's like nice and bright white. Quite a difference. Um, so yeah, these ones I think definitely have to go. Like it's for sure time for me to retire those ones. So those are gonna go for sure. And then these are my old pants. And I don't know if you guys can see how worn out they are. Um, they're just, they're pilling. They, they just don't look good anymore. They're not good quality anymore. They, the stitches are kind of coming loose a little bit. They just make me feel super frumpy when I wear them. And I want to feel good about myself when I go to work. You know, I want to take a little bit of pride in my appearance when I go to work. I want to feel good about myself. When I first got these scrubs, I did. I felt great about myself. But now when I put them on, I just feel like, especially with those, those long sleeve tops, I just started to feel quite dirty and frumpy, even though they were clean. I don't know. I might be able to just keep one pair and get rid of the other ones just because this is my dilemma because some of my old scrub tops are still in pretty good condition but they're just a little bit miscolored but the pants are not in very good condition but they're the the right shade of white that they match the tops would you guys keep the scrub pants because they're the right shade or would you just scrap them and start wearing your old tops with your new pants Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys the long sleeve t-shirts that I got for under scrub tops. So the one on the left is the Wonderwink 
which is a new brand to me. I really like the shape of the neckline. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this one's a really nice like traditional like round crew neck. This one dips down a little bit more in the front, the, the Adar one, which is fine. So this one is the Adar. This is a size small. The Wonder Wink is also a size small. I, like I said, I don't want extra small because I don't want them too constrictive. And if they are a little bit on the loose side, I can always throw them in the dryer and give them a little shrink. But yeah, so those are the two that I found that I really liked. Um, honestly, now that I've tried the Wonder Wink, between the two, I'm kind of leaning toward Wonder Wink and I think it might be worth it to get one more for sure. So I'm just gonna show you guys what this this is the Adar, how the Adar fits. I just have a sports bra and just like jogging pants from Aritzia, but this is how the Adar fits. So it's a little bit tighter. I prefer things that kind of flow away from the waist a little bit. All right, and this is the Wonder Wink. So you guys can see it is a much more like loose fit. The material is a lot more like thin and flimsy sort of, but it's very like comfortable. It literally feels like I'm wearing nothing. Like it's just so comfortable. Okay, these are the two warm-up jackets that I have. The one on the right is from Cherokee. I've had that for a couple years now probably, and I have hardly ever worn it. I think I might have worn it once or twice, literally, since I got it. I always tend to wear a cardigan, like a long sleeve cardigan. Um, I can see myself wearing the one on the left a lot more often. It's a little bit more of a like a looser fit. I don't know how to describe it. The one on the right is more like structured, um, kind of, I don't know, cinches in more at the waist and stuff like that. And I just really like the kind of slight, I don't know why, but I like the kind of slightly boxier cut of the one on the left. So the one on the left is from Wonder Wink. Again, I think this is a brand I'm really going to like. I'm finding a lot of really great stuff. Um, this is a small and the Cherokee is an extra, extra small. <laughs> it's a beautiful warm up jacket. I think I'm probably going to sell the Cherokee uh, just on like local Facebook or something and keep the Wonder Wink because I definitely don't need both and I really really enjoy how I feel in the Wonder Wink. The declutter pile is getting larger and it's really nice. I'm going to be really happy to get this stuff out of the house. Ivar's so funny when he sleeps. He likes to put his little nose like right into whatever clothing is around because <laughs> it pr probably because it smells like us. Um, he's so funny. He just loves to sleep with his little face like nestled into everything. Okay, so this is my new scrubs folded and organized along with the dog. <laughs> um, so as you can see, the brighter stuff is my new stuff. Um, this is the new warm-up jacket. These are new scrub tops. I could have sworn I had two, I had more than two new scrub tops coming. I'm definitely gonna need more than two um, because yeah, I don't want to just have two on rotation. They'll wear out way too quickly. I think what I'll do is I'll figure out which one is my favorite and order one more of those. These are my two pairs of scrub pants. Um, again, probably wise to have one more pair for sure. So this is the cardigan I usually wear when I go to work. It's like an oatmeal colored long sleeve cardigan cardigan i get a lot of compliments on it actually i bought it many many years ago from like bootlegger or ricky's it was not expensive not high-end or anything it's very warm and cozy for the winter it's it's quite nice to just throw on if it's a colder day and this is currently how i have my scrubs they're just in my dresser i have toyed with the idea of hanging them back up in my closet because it would keep them a little bit more wrinkle free and just that way i can kind of see like what i'm grabbing a little bit better so i don't know if um i want to do that by the way, you guys, I apologize for the lighting. Um, the sun is finally coming out. It was raining cats and dogs this morning, and now the sun's finally coming out, so we're going to have better lighting. So, all right, I'm going to get myself set up, and let's quickly go through these declutters, which is also going to take quite a long time, I think. <laughs> Okay, so the first things I'm decluttering, I already just showed you. This is my scrub pants, my warm-up jacket, which I'm going to be selling, and my other long sleeve Um shirts under scrub shirts that are just incredibly incredibly warm worn out and just have to go the next item i'm decluttering is actually this sports bra this is from tala it's really nice but i don't have a matching pair of pants and i already have this sports bra in two other colors that are actually matching sets and i prefer to have matching tops and bottoms this is kind of like 
the third wheel or whatever it's like the odd one out that just doesn't get worn so it's really pretty but i'm going to be donating this i think the next item is actually a workout top i have had this top forever this is from a brand called four laps it is if you guys ever see on my instagram it's one of the long sleeve cropped t-shirts that i often wear for my workouts this one is really really worn out um, you can see that there is a stain in the back i don't know what that is from i must have honestly like when I was doing something on a bench, I must have laid down on like somebody's drink or something and didn't realize it because it's just totally, and I've washed it a few times. I've used like lots of things to try to get rid of it. I've even tried bleaching it and I just can't. So it's just really worn out. Thankfully, I do have other ones of these in my um, in my workout drawer, but yeah, there's even like makeup stains. It's just really, really worn out. This would be a good one to turn into cleaning rags. The next item is actually this cardigan. I love this cardigan. I have worn it so many times. It's a really nice lightweight uh, cardigan that I wear actually to the gym quite a lot because it's extremely lightweight. Like I said, it's very breathable um, and it just kind of adds like a little bit of a sophisticated, chic, preppy look to your gym outfit. And it also keeps me warm because my arms always get cold. Um, but this one, unfortunately has, I don't know if it's just been washed too many times, but it's no longer holding its shape. The sleeves and the neckline and everything have completely shrunk. I actually kind of want to wash it with like a conditioner and try to stretch it out because I did like this cardigan so much and I'm having a really hard time finding a replacement. The next thing I'm decluttering is a sleep mask. Um, just because I recently got a better one from Amazon, the one that I got is designed so that it kind of, I don't know, it's like built up a little bit. So it really goes around your eyes and completely blocks out. Like it's a blackout sleep mask. Um, this one isn't totally blackout and it also doesn't stay on my head very well. It kind of moves around and shifts around and usually ends up falling off before I wake up. And because I work um, some night shifts, I need a good sleep mask that is going to stay in place um, and block out all the light before, you know, while I'm sleeping during the day. So this one doesn't quite do it for me. It's okay for like a couple of hours, but yeah, not the best. So this one's going to go. The next item I'm going to be decluttering are these shorts from Alpha Elite. They're very nice, but they're a very bright, kind of hot coral, and they're very attention grabbing, and they're just not my style anymore. They're not something I really want to wear when I go to the gym. I've, I've really changed my style over the last little bit, and I prefer wearing something that's a little bit less attention grabbing, a little bit more sort of conservative, I guess, and um, I have like a certain aesthetic that I, that I like, and it doesn't really involve bright colors. A few years ago, I was all about these these bright colors in the gym I loved my corals and my reds and stuff like that and lately I just haven't been oh my god look how he's sleeping <laughs> that looks so unnatural and uncomfortable <laughs> Aww, poor little guy He's obviously comfortable. He's having a really good sleep. <laughs> the next thing I'm going to be decluttering is this activewear set from Buff Bunny. Um, I did briefly mention this in my last video when I was talking about organizing my activewear and I did like a huge declutter vlog. This is okay, but honestly, they're not my favorite. I don't gravitate toward them as much. The shorts are not quite as high-waisted as I would like them to be. They're very tight. Um, they kind of feel like they give me a wedgie when I wear them. And the top is really good and supportive, but not the most... It's just not my favorite. It's quite tight and whatever. I don't know. So yeah, anyways, I'm going to, it's pretty much brand new. I've literally worn it once. Um, so this, I think I'm going to post on Poshmark as well. The next item is actually a onesie from the company 437. Um, it is a, or bodysuit, I guess. So it's a full length black bodysuit and it has this really pretty contrast stitching or contrast hem on it. Um, it's really cute, but it doesn't flatter my body all that well. It doesn't have enough compression in certain places or enough lift in certain places I feel like I'm wearing like a child's leotard and I'm going to the gym it's doesn't even have a built-in shelf bra like there's it's just really not very practical I thought I really liked it when I first got it but I have not reached for this once I do have another set from 437 that I like a lot better and I've worn it multiple times so this I think I'm just going to cut my losses and sell it I have never worn it the next items that I'm going to be decluttering are actually these cognac colored sandals from Steve Madden. They're super cute, super pretty. I love that they're like the H style, like Hermes style sandals. However, I find these ones quite painful. I do have the exact same ones in white and I broke them in 
pretty easily actually and they don't hurt my feet the white ones are actually very very comfortable for whatever reason these ones are not um they're beautiful they're very very hermes inspired but yeah they just are kind of painful they hurt my feet it's not worth it to me like this part here is rubbing on the top of my foot and i literally wore these for like an hour to go get groceries and by the time i got home i had a blister that was a deal breaker for me so i'm not i'm just not going to suffer through while i break them in so I'm going to sell them. They're pretty much new condition. I've literally worn them once. Like they don't even look like they've been worn, you guys. The next item that I'm going to let go are these high-waisted pleated shorts from Zara. These are new with tag. They are a size small. They're very similar to like the Wilfred Effortless short. The issue is I just don't wear black. I've had these for quite a while now and I do not reach for them. I always, always, always reach for my ecru tones, my pastel colors and things like that. So I should have known better. I really loved them when I tried them on. They're the perfect silhouette. They fit me really well, but I should have known better that I, I just don't reach for black bottoms like almost ever, especially in the summertime. The next item is a donation. This is just a nude colored bra. I have had this forever. It doesn't really give me enough support. It's a little bit stretched out. I've worn it so many times. This bra has definitely gotten a lot of use, um, but it's a 34C and I think I have to start buying 32 like for the support. Otherwise it just like, I don't know, they stretch out. And so going forward, I think I'm just going to order 32 instead of 34. Cause yeah, like the cup size and everything is good, but then I find that they just don't like, I need something to really like offer support. So anyway, um, this is a good bra and it, it still looks fine. Like under clothing, it looks perfectly fine. It's extremely comfortable. The next set kind of makes me sad to let go of because I paid a lot for it and I loved it when I first got it and I was super pumped to wear it. And I think I did wear it to the gym once or twice. Um, this is a workout outfit from Aloe Yoga. If you guys are familiar with Aloe, they are not cheap. The pants themselves are like $120 and then the bras themselves are like $70 or $80. Very frustrating. The bra is still really good. I like the shape of the bra. I like that it has like this cute little um, like stitching detail. It kind of has like a contour detail in the stitching. It also has the front V contour. That's actually the part that I find the least flattering. Also with Aloe Yoga, um, they're made for like tall skinny girls. They do have seven eighths length and then they have full length. I think these are, I don't even know if these are the seven eighth or the full length, but anyway, they are, they're both a size small, um, but they're just too long on me and they're not that flattering. They were when I got them. I don't know, like maybe my opinion changed or maybe I changed. I don't know. But when I first got them, I thought they were much more flattering than they are. Yeah. That outfit is going to be posted. Uh, hopefully I can recuperate a little bit of my losses with that one. I really like Aloe Yoga, but I'm hesitant to order from them because I haven't had great, great experiences ordering from them. A lot, like I say, a lot of their stuff I feel like is made for girls who are like tall, skinny yoga girls. Now we get into the nitty gritty. I have a lot of stuff in here. Um, I, I went through and I did a huge declutter of some of my makeup as well as some of my brushes, because as you guys know, probably if you watch my channel, I was super influenced during the sephora sale to try new products and a couple of them i probably didn't need and i also went a little bit crazier on the foundations because i was trying to find the perfect perfect foundation for me the one that was the right undertone the one that didn't oxidize the one that i liked the finish i liked how it dried down and unfortunately there's a foundation in here that i realized too late is not the best for me and i'm past the exchange period with sephora um, and then there's just a couple of items that kind of have just been ousted by other items. Um, one concept that I wanted to talk to you guys about that I thought about while I was decluttering my makeup is the concept of like thinking of your wardrobe and your makeup as a recipe or even your perfume as a recipe. So for example, if you are to make a batch of cookies and you have the perfect cookie recipe where every time you use that recipe, your cookies turn out perfect. They always turn out the same. They always turn out perfect. Why would you ever change your recipe? So that's how I've started looking at my makeup is, you know how sometimes like, I'm sure that you guys have experienced it. You have good makeup days and bad makeup days. If I've ever had a bad makeup day, I always like take a mental note of, okay, why do I not like my makeup today? Was it the blush that I used? Was it the foundation that I used? Was it the combination of the concealer and the powder? What about my makeup today 
did I do differently that I don't like? And then if I have a really, really good makeup day, I always take note of what foundation did I use? What finishing powder did I use? What bronzer did I use? What mascara did I use? And I kind of keep note of that. And then over the last few months, I've kind of been like weeding out the stuff that is when I do my makeup with it, it doesn't quite turn out how I like it. And I've kind of whittled it down to the products that are sort of those perfect ingredients, so to speak, that when I use them, my cookies always turn out the same. <laughs> my makeup always turns out perfect. And for me, you guys, I have to stop watching makeup videos because when I watch makeup videos, as much as I enjoy them, as much as I love watching a good makeup tutorial, and I actually have a few makeup YouTubers that are some of my favorite. I find them really relaxing. I love watching their stuff, um, but I am just too easily influenced when I, especially around the Sephora sale, I binge watched so many Sephora sale recommendations, you guys, and I just kind of went a little ham and I... As a result, now I have like a couple things that I too little too late have realized are not going to work. But also through that sale, I did discover some new favorites and some new holy grails. So I guess it wasn't all for nothing. Um, but yeah, going forward, you guys, I have to stop influencing myself. Like I have to de-influence myself and I have to just be really careful because I kid you not, like two years ago, I didn't even know what a VIB sale was. Two or three years ago, I didn't even know that there was such a thing as a VIB sale. Like that was just new to me. And back in those days, I never like overspent on makeup ever because I didn't really have an opportunity to like buy a huge amount of product at a sale. So knowing about these sales while you save money, it still influences you to spend money you wouldn't have spent. So anyway, that's a little bit long-winded. So you're going to see some products in here that you might be kind of surprised that I'm letting go because I've actually spoken highly of them before when I first hauled them and when I first got them. But I can only be honest with myself and with you guys. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So the first item is a home decor piece. This is just a little piece of knotted wood. I actually have two of them. Um, one of them is already in use in the other, actually, no, sorry. The other one is in use in my bedroom at the moment. I don't need both of them. I don't really have a place to put this one. And it really wasn't super expensive, but I've had it for quite a while and it's kind of cute. And I think somebody else out there would really like it. I might even see if my mom wants it, but I don't need this. So I'm letting this go. The next item is another supplement empty, which you guys won't be surprised to see. Every time I do a declutter and empties video, this product is always featured. Sometimes I even have two bottles. This is the Dose & Co Pure Collagen Unflavored Collagen Peptides. It is the bovine collagen. When you, If you ever get this brand, you'll notice that they have a few different colors. They've got a lavender stripe. They've got the pink stripe. They've got like a cream colored stripe. I believe the cream colored stripe is vanilla flavored. So if you want something vanilla flavored in your coffee, I don't like flavored coffee. So I haven't gone that direction. And between this one and the marine collagen, which is the purple one, I like this one better. It doesn't have as much of a taste. I almost don't taste it at all. Whereas with the, um, the purple stripe, the marine collagen, it almost has a little bit of a fishy kind of a seafood undertone like barely there but i can kind of tell so i do recommend the pink bovine if you're looking into this brand. the next item is a perfume this is overture from zerjoff so i actually really like the scent it's kind of like an orange figgy like summertime fragrance um it's very creamy it smells really really beautiful i actually just smelled it again and i was like thinking maybe i should keep it but this was, I don't know, this was a semi-blind purchase, um, and I don't know, it's just not one that I think I'm going to reach for. I kind of like, although I want my perfume collection to be diverse and interesting and unique and a little bit more in the niche direction, I don't find this particular scent super easy to wear. I still tend to gravitate toward my more feminine, like, um, vanilla type of fragrances, my basic woody vanillas, my floral vanillas, those kind of things. So I think it, I think I just have to let this one go. Um, something that I have realized since I've decluttered and gone down to only about 10 to 13 perfumes in my collection, which is what I have now, it's really hard for me to find a perfume that is good enough that it deserves a spot in my collection. Like, I have to really, really, really love that fragrance. And sometimes I still make mistakes like this where I buy a perfume that I get influenced, I have a sample, I think it smells really good. 
it's so interesting and I get like super, super excited. I get into the hype and I get it. And then I realize like this isn't a 10 out of 10. Like it, it, it's not good enough for me to have it in my collection, even though it's really, really good. I think I would keep it if I was still collecting perfumes. I think I would keep it if I wanted a large collection, but it's because I've gotten so specific and I have even like, I'm even getting close to having like a signature scent now. Um, I just... Yeah, this one just has to go. The next empty that I thought I would share with you guys, this is actually a household empty. This is the Tide Pods, the four in one with with four in one, four in one with Downy. I don't know how to say that. It's the April Fresh. I will not be buying the Tide Pods again, you guys. As much as they are convenient and it's nice to be able to throw a pod in the wash, I didn't like that I couldn't customize the amount of detergent. Like sometimes I do a smaller load, sometimes I do a bigger load, and they actually recommend on here that if you do a large load, you're supposed to use three pods. Are you kidding me? I've never used three pods ever. I've never even used two pods. I always just use one, even if it's a large load, because to me that's just a lot, and these things are kind of expensive. Um, so yeah, I didn't like that I couldn't customize. I think we probably use way more detergent than we need to, even though it makes our clothing smell so fresh. A lot of times I literally just use like a quarter cup of like the little cups that come with the detergent and it gets my clothes perfectly clean. Like there's no issues. Um, so yeah, I just won't be using these again. I find them really expensive and just kind of finicky to work with. And they did smell really nice. I know my boyfriend really likes these, but I prefer just a normal liquid detergent or oops, or like a powder or something like that where I can kind of customize it a little bit better. So the next item is a conditioner. This is the L'Oreal Paris Dream Links conditioner with keratin and castor oil. So I'm actually not completely done this. I recently finished up my Way conditioner for fine hair. And just because I hadn't decided yet on a, a new, like, line that I wanted to go with, something that was maybe more high-end. Um, I just went with something that I knew I liked and had tried before, and this one I really like. This smells really, really good. So what I did was I actually emptied this bottle into my empty Way bottle because the Way bottles are prettier in the shower but I really do like this conditioner. Um, so this one smells amazing. It smells really fruity. I actually kind of wish they would make a perfume that smells like this. Believe it or not, you guys, when I use this to wash my hair and condition, I get compliments from people. People tell me I smell really, really good. All I've used is this shampoo and conditioner, but it smells so fruity and fresh and clean. It it's just so pretty. Like it smells really, really nice. It kind of gives off that chance of tundra vibe where you smell like fresh and clean and fresh out of the shower. And it just smells really, really good. Just a nice fruity scent. Um, but more than anything, it's really hydrating and it is for long damaged hair, specifically for long damaged hair. So I really, really like this one for a drugstore um, cheap, like affordable shampoo and conditioner. My next empty is a supplement. This is the melatonin five milligram quick dissolve. I featured this in many, many empties videos already because I do use melatonin to help me sleep quite a lot. Um, I usually do tend to use 10 milligrams. So I either use two fives or one ten, um, which I probably is like probably too much, but I don't want to always use Benadryl or something. And I don't necessarily want to use something stronger from like a pharmacy. Uh, this tends to work really well for me. I get a really good sleep. So anyway, I'm all out of the melatonin five milligram. Now we have a little sample. This is the Youth to the People Kale and Green Tea Spinach Vitamin Superfood Cleanser. I told you guys in a recent video that I tried a sample of this and really liked it. I can definitely see myself one day having a full bottle of this, but at the moment I just got the Caudalie cleanser, the Vino Clean Almond Milk Cleanser, and I'm really enjoying that so far. Last night was my last night using it, or my first night using it, and I also used it this morning. And I also have still my Vanny Cream, and I also have the Yam, sorry, the Isn't Tree Yam Root Cleanser. So I don't need um, another like expensive cleanser at the moment, but I really, really liked this. The next item is another skincare empty. This one I actually meant to include in my last video, but I forgot. This is the Hada Labo Cleansing Oil. This, you guys, is probably be my favorite cleansing oil or cleansing balm or anything in that line that I have along those lines that I have ever used. It does such a good job of removing my makeup and sunscreen, even my mascaras. It does a really good job. It has a beautiful lightweight texture. It, it doesn't feel thick and oily and greasy to the point that it feels like it leaves a residue on your skin. Um, a lot of you guys know that I was using the, what is it called? The Palmer's Cocoa Butter for Face 
cleansing oil with rosehip seed oil. I really like it and it does work really good and it's also very affordable and accessible. It's like $10 at your local pharmacy. The Hada Labo is a little bit more expensive. Um, this one's like $25 a bottle, but you can buy refills actually. This is definitely my favorite cleansing oil that I think I've ever tried. So currently I'm still making my way through a Palmer's cocoa one that I had in my closet. I'm about halfway done that one. And I also have the Anua Heart Leaf Cleansing Oil, which was recommended to me by a subscriber a few months ago. And I've tried it a couple times and really, really like it. So, and I, I think I like the Anua Heart Leaf also better than the Palmer's. So going forward, I'm going to, I'm either going to buy another Hot Labo or I might repurchase the Anua depending on how I feel over the next couple of months. So, but this was so good and I was so, so excited to share it with you. Um, definitely hundred percent recommend like the hype is real with this. You guys, it's really, really lovely. The next item is a supplement and actually I've gone through a lot of these. I've never considered putting it in a video to share with you guys, but I really want to share it with you because I don't know if you guys remember, but a video, a few videos back, I did a declutter featuring athletic greens because they had sent me a PR package um, again, which was kind of excessive. There was a lot of stuff in there I would never use. Anyways, I didn't accept the sponsorship with them because although I think it's a great product, I personally didn't like it. I didn't think it tasted very good. I did not like having to drink an entire bottle of the green the green juice or whatever, um, like when you mix in the powder with water, because that's a lot to commit to if you don't really like the taste of something. As it is when I get up in the morning, I have a glass of water every single morning. It's the very first thing that goes into my body even before I make coffee or have anything else. Um, I cannot handle in the morning drinking an entire big container of Athletic Greens. I found that it tasted gritty, a little bit bitter. Uh, I didn't really like the way it tasted at all. It tasted kind of artificial to me. It had like a fruity kind of almost like tropical, like coconutty kind of feel or something, but I didn't like the taste and I found it gritty and it had that green bitter undertone that they try to mask in products like that with artificial flavors. And I just did not enjoy it. And I knew I would not commit to it. Like I knew I was not going to drink that and therefore I can't recommend it to you guys. I do support their values and the purpose behind the company, and I do think they have great products, but I was like, I don't want to put on a fake face and pretend I like something that I don't, so I'm not going to do it. This, however, I do like. This is what I recommend. It's also more affordable, and it's much more digestible. Like, figuratively speaking, it's much more palatable, easier to get in, you don't have to drink eight ounces. So this is the NACA Original um, Vital Greens. So this has a whole bunch of superfoods in it. It's got chlorophyll, aloe vera, ginseng, ginkgo biloba. It is a superfood complex. It has tons of super healthy green um, ingredients. Like it's got spirulina, chlorella, um, all of these green superfoods that are known to be mega, mega packed with antioxidants. I think it also has, it's got like broccoli juice, carrot juice. It has superior absorption, ginseng to help energize, ginkgo to improve alertness, chlorophyll to detoxify, nutrients and botanicals to aid digestion. So this, you guys, you literally only take 15 milliliters a day. So you can see that I have used it. It is completely empty. Um, and you just pour yourself a little 15 mil shot. It is very potent and it has like a they've added like mint to it to give it like a minty taste so it's a very strong minty flavored shot it does taste quite green it tastes like you're drinking something like something extremely potent and pure like imagine the most like photosynthesis object you can imagine and you're drinking like a super super condensed shot of that it is extremely good for you um tons of nutrients tons of antioxidants and you just take it in one little 15 mil shot and it is pretty potent and it's pretty strong but you just down it and you follow it with a glass of water and it's done there's no like fussing around with mixing powder you don't have to worry about the taste because it just goes down in one shot versus drinking an entire glass which is what you had to do with the athletic greens. If the athletic greens would come up with something like this, where it was just a super concentrated shot, I would be down. Like I 100% would have switched and I would have gone with them because that's how I like to do it because I'm not going to drink a whole glass of this. <laughs> I'm just not, it doesn't taste that good. This here also doesn't have like artificial flavors in it. So yeah, this is the way I like to get my greens in you guys. And I really, really recommend it. I think you can probably get it from Amazon, but I have gone through probably 
I don't, I'm not very consistent. Like some days I take it every single day and other times I'll go one or two weeks and I'll forget to take it. Um, but I've probably gone through like three or four of these in the last like couple years. So, and it does last quite a long time. Um, so I really, really recommend this just to show you guys. I'll see if I can show you like how, how thick and green this is. It also stains everything. Like you have to be really careful, but I think there's still probably a little bit left. Oh, there is. Okay. So that is, that is what it looks like. You guys like, look at that green stuff. Super, super. Ooh, and it's very, very potent. It, it smells like the most concentrated form of minty green, like seaweed you could ever imagine. That's what it is. It has a very seaweedy, like algae, um, kind of thing to it. So anyway, 100% recommend. This is what I would recommend. It's more affordable. It's easier to take than the Athletic Greens. Okay, I'm going to have to go through the rest pretty quick because I still have a lot of stuff in this bin. I might save the makeup for another video and do a separate makeup declutter because this is just going to take too long. This video has already been really long. This is a product that I'm going to pass on to my mom or somebody or maybe I'll use it as hand cream. This is the Cetaphil hydrating night cream for normal to very dry skin. So I used to use this back in the day before I discovered like Sunday Riley Ice and Pharmacy Honey Halo and Tatcha. This was what I was using. It seemed to be okay, but these days you guys, I tried it again and it is not hydrating enough for me. Like it looks like it's pretty rich, but it is not hydrating enough. I need, maybe because I've been using like tretinoin last year, maybe because I've gotten more heavy into the retinoids, I need something really, really rich. Um, so this just does not do it for me anymore. It would be really nice as like a hand cream or maybe a neck cream. Okay, the next item is the Ordinary 100% Organic Cold Pressed Rose Hip Seed Oil. So there's nothing wrong with this product. I actually really like it. I think it's really nourishing and hydrating and moisturizing for my skin. I have used it quite a bit. Um, however, the shelf life has reached its max, unfortunately, and it does smell a little bit rancid, so I can't continue to use it. I've only used, it's really sad, because I've only used like about 25%, not even 20% of the container. I dug it back out the other day to use it, and it smelled a little funny, and I looked at the shelf life, and it has surpassed it's open. It only has a, you guys, the stuff only has a six month shelf life, I guess, because it is like hundred percent organic oil. So yeah, it's going to go rancid faster than something else. Um, so I will not be purchasing this again, but I'm kind of sad because it's a little bit of a waste that I have to essentially toss 80% of a bottle, just very, very wasteful. So I don't think I'll be purchasing that again. The next item makes me a little bit sad. This is the Dermatology Needleless Serum. I have one full unopened bottle that I might try to sell. Um, and then I also have a partially used, about half, half used open bottle. So this sounded like again, kind of a miracle serum. It sounded like it had everything I could ever want or need in a serum. It has peptides. It has copper peptides. I think it has hyaluronic acid. Um, I think it has panthenol in it. Like it's got a whole bunch of really great, I think there's ceramides. Like it just sounded like an incredible, incredible product. Um, super highly raved about by a lot of influencers, whatever. So I was influenced. I got it. And unfortunately with this product, this is the only product that when I add it into my routine, my skin immediately gets sensitized. I don't know what it is. I have a whole routine. I can use my vitamin C. I can use my adapalene, everything I can use. But for some reason, as soon as I would add this in, my skin would get irritated. I think probably because of the copper peptides. I'm not hundred percent sure, but research is conflicting also about copper peptides, about whether or not they're actually something you really need in your skincare. I've seen a lot of dermatologists talk about it and it's not one of those ingredients that they say is a must have. The top anti-aging and like skincare ingredients that a lot of dermatologists promote are your vitamin C like your antioxidants and your retinoids. Those are kind of the two main ones. And of course, SPF. And then after that, everything else is kind of almost like a bonus. Um, so yeah, I just don't think I need it. I'm kind of sad because I, as you can see, I got a backup because they were having a Black Friday sale and I thought I was going to want a backup, but I've realized it doesn't work for me. The next empty is another, um, 
skin, uh, what do you call it, supplement. <laughs> this is the one a day women's multivitamin. I'm not really a um, strict like daily multivitamin kind of person. I just got these, I think, because I was trying to support my hair growth and my hair health after losing a whole bunch after having COVID. And I wanted to make sure that I was like had a well-rounded nutrient profile. So I did go through this entire thing. I haven't repurchased. Honestly, I find these vitamins so hard to take because they're so big and bulky and sometimes they get stuck in my throat. So I'm not real fond of them. I also feel like I do eat a pretty good diet and I don't know if it's necessary for me to take extra multivitamins. I sort of just supplement where I feel like I might need it. Um, so these, I don't think I'm going to purchase again right away, or maybe in the future, if I do, I'll get like vitamin gummies. The next item is another empty that I'm really happy to share with you guys. I was so excited to finally finish this. This is the Sunday Riley CEO Glow Vitamin C and Turmeric Face Oil. I raved about this, you guys, and I still love this so much. So I went through this entire container. It seemed like it was taking forever. Well, it did take forever. I started taking this in fall of last year and I just finished it like two or three weeks ago. I love this product. I can definitely see myself purchasing, purchasing this again, especially for the winter. It not only does it have the vitamin C in it that I want and the antioxidant from the turmeric, but it also is really, really, um, like nourishing and kind of hydrating for the skin because it is an oil. Um, it also, I have come to love the smell. I have come to love the smell of this, you guys. Like, oh, I already miss it. I already miss it. This is the kind of thing I could see myself purchasing like at the next Sephora sale, something like this where like it's a THD ascorbate. It's got a longer shelf life. I know I'll use it. I know I love it. Currently, the vitamin C that I'm using is the May Love, the Glow Maker, um, because it was affordable and it has the uh, CE Ferulic composition, same as with the SkinCeuticals. I heard really good things about it, and I really wanted to try that kind of ascorbic acid CE Ferulic direction again. And I'm really enjoying it because the May Love sinks right into your skin. Um, I don't find it irritating at all, and I really have been enjoying it, but. Everything about this is lovely. Everything about this is wonderful. The way it smells, the way it applies, it gives me a glow. It literally makes my skin look like I'm glowing. Um, I am obsessed with this. Like I will definitely, definitely repurchase this again in the future. Even just smelling it now out of the bottle, like it, oh, I just miss it already. Like I do. And my last little empty, I have decided I'm going to save the makeup until next video, you guys. This video is just already way too long, so I think it'll be kind of fun because it'll be a dedicated... Oh, I have one more skincare product. I have one more skincare product I didn't notice. Um, so we have this product and one more left, but I'm going to save the, the makeup for another video. Um, so this is an empty. This was actually a sample I got, but I thought it's fun to share with you guys sample empties that I've tried and what I thought of them. So this is the Biosense Squalane and Marine Algae Eye Cream. I really liked this. However, I didn't find it as rich as I like. As you guys know, if you saw my last Sephora haul video, I did get the Silk Peony Tatcha Eye Cream, which is a lot thicker. And darn it, I forgot to put it on this morning because I'm not used to using an eye cream. Um, but this was really nice. Um, I really like the Biosense products. I think they're extremely high quality and it was, it was nice and nourishing and hydrating, but I actually ended up using it just on my face because I didn't find it to be like rich enough or thick enough for the eye area. Okay, now finally, this is a skincare declutter. This is also from May Love. This also came highly recommended from dermatologists, especially Dr. Lee. They have talked about this on their channel a few times. It really intrigued me. This is the May Love Fade Away Brightening Serum. Um, so I have gone through about half of this. No, not half of this, uh, probably 30%. Unfortunately, this really irritates my skin, which is interesting because it's supposed to have, I think there's like Centella Asiatica or something in it or something that's supposed to be very calming and soothing for your skin. Um, it also has alpha arbutin, which is a cousin to, or like, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's related to hydroquinone, which hydroquinone is kind of the gold standard, like you need a prescription for it for dark spots and hyperpigmentation and melasma. So this has kind of like a cousin to hydroquinone. It's a lot more safe. It has fewer potential side effects. This also has kojic acid in it. Um, and then it says it's blended with a um, a blend of unique botanical extracts and hyaluronic acid that hydrates and soothes your skin. It is green. Um, it's really interesting. It's this green kind of 
interesting like stuff. It smells really bad. Like it smells awful. That's the other thing. It has an awful smell to it. It's really, really strong and chemically. Um, but I can get past the smell of certain things if I know they're working. And I actually do think this was working. Like I actually thought I saw a brightening effect from this. I'm not even kidding. And I kind of like, part of me wants to try it again and see, but I found this a little irritating and I'm kind of nervous about stuff like that because I'm trying to get my skin, my skin barrier to be super healthy and in a good place after trying tretinoin last year and my skin got so irritated. And so I've been kind of on this mission to like do the best stuff for my skin, but also support my skin barriers health. And sometimes when I put this on you guys, it's stung. I'm not even kidding. Like everything else I put on was fine. My adapalene, which is a retinoid, um, was fine. My vitamin C ascorbic acid, totally fine. My faded topicals, totally fine everything totally fine. This stuff stung a little bit. So I don't know if it is the alpha arbutin that's in there. Maybe, and I was using this quite a lot. Like maybe I just have to go down to using it once or twice a week, maybe once a week or twice a week would be okay. I don't really want to give up on it because I do think it was working. Like I actually think I saw an improvement within the time that I've been using it. So this one I might actually dig out of the bin. Now that I think about it, I was kind of hemming and hawing about it, but I think if I just go down in frequency, it might be okay. And I really want to use alpha arbutin because it is so close to hydroquinone, which is the gold standard for fading dark spots. So yeah, I think I might actually pull this one out of my declutter bin. So you guys, that is it for today's declutter and organization. This video already turned out to be way, way longer than I expected it to, and now I have to do some major organization. Um, as you can see, I've got lots of makeup in the bin, but I'm just gonna save that for another video. It'll probably be more fun that way anyway to do like a dedicated makeup declutter, um, but this is all just kind of other like random household stuff. Looks like it's time to wake up from our little nappy poo and heat up our coffee and get on with our day. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this little declutter and organize with me. I hope that it maybe gave you some insight into some products that you maybe haven't heard of before or were interested in. Um, not that I'm trying to like influence you, but um, when I find something great, I like to share it with you guys. So yeah, that's it for today, you guys. Thank you for watching.